Little is known about Robert Teach's early life. It is commonly believed that Robert Teach was born somewhere in England in the year 1680. He may have arrived in the Caribbean in the last years of the 17th century on a merchant vessel. He moved from Jamaica to New Providence, and with most privateers once involved in the war, he became involved in piracy. Possibly around 1716, he joined the crew of Captain Benjamin Hornigold. In 1716, Hornigold placed Teach in charge of a sloop he had taken as a prize. In early 1717, Hornigold and Teach, each captaining a sloop, set off for the mainland. They captured a boat carrying 120 barrels of flour out of Havana, and shortly thereafter took 100 barrels of wine from a sloop out of Bermuda. In September, Teach and Hornigold encountered Steed Bonnet, a landowner and military officer from a wealthy family who had turned to piracy earlier that year. Bonnet's crew of about 70 were reportedly dissatisfied with his command, so with Bonnet's permission, Teach took control of Bonnet's ship, Revenge. The pirate's flotilla now consisted of three ships, Teach on the Revenge, his old sloop, and Hornigold's ship called Ranger. By October, another vessel had been acquired and added to the small fleet. By the end of 1717, Hornigold was demoted. Whether Teach had any involvement in this decision is unknown. However, Hornigold quickly retired from piracy. He took Ranger and one of the sloops, leaving Teach with revenge and the remaining sloop. On the 28th of November, Teach's two ships attacked a French merchant vessel off the coast of St. Vincent. The ship was La Concorde and was carrying a cargo of slaves. Teach and his crew sailed the vessel south along St. Vincent's and the Grenadines to Barqueur, where they disembarked the crew and cargo and converted the ship for their own use. The crew of La Concorde was given the smaller of Teach's two sloops, which they renamed Bad Meeting, and sailed to Martinique, Teach immediately renamed La Concorde as Queen Anne's Revenge and equipped it with 40 guns. On the 5th of December 1717, Teach stopped the merchant sloop Margaret off the coast of Crab Island near Anguilla. The captain, Henry Bostock, and his crew remained Teach's prisoners for about eight hours. Bostock, who had been held aboard Queen Anne's Revenge, was returned unharmed to the Margaret and was allowed to leave with his crew. He reported the matter to Governor Walter Hamilton. Bostock's deposition described Teach as a tall spare man with a very large black beard which he wore very long. It is the first recorded account of Teach's appearance and is the source of his nickname, Blackbeard. He also described Blackbeard in times of battle as wearing a sling over his shoulders with three braces with three brace of pistols hanging in holsters like bandoliers and stuck lidded matches under his hat. The later apparently to emphasize the fearsome appearance he wished to present to his enemies. Blackbeard's movement between late 1717 and early 1780 are not known. Blackbeard, they sailed for the Bay of Honduras, where they added another ship and four sloops to their flotilla. His fleet sailed to the wrecks of the 1715 Spanish fleet off the eastern coast of Florida. There, Blackbeard disembarked the crew of a captured Spanish sloop before proceeding north to the port of Charlestown, South Carolina, attacking three vessels along the way. By May 1718, Blackbeard had awarded himself the rank of Commodore. Late that month, his flotilla blockaded the port of Charlestown in South Carolina. All vessels entering or leaving the port were stopped. Over the next five or six days, about nine vessels were stopped and ransacked as they attempted to sail past Charleston Bar, where Blackbeard's fleet was anchored. While in Charlestown, Blackbeard learned that Woods Rogers had left England with several men of war with orders to purge the West Indies of pirates. Blackbeard's flotilla sailed northward along the Atlantic coast and into Topsail Inlet off the coast of North Carolina. Queen Anne's Revenge ran aground on a sandbar, cracked the main mast, and severely damaged many of the timbers. Blackbeard had learned of an offer of a royal pardon and proudly confided in Bonnet his willingness to accept it. The pardon was open to all pirates who surrendered on or about the 5th of September, 1718, but contained a stipulation that immunity was offered only against crimes committed before the 5th of January. Although, in theory, this left Bonnet and Blackbeard at risk of being hung for their actions in Charleston Bar, thought that Governor Charles Eden was a man he could trust, but to make sure, he waited to see what would happen to another captain. Bonnet left immediately on a small sailboat for Bathtown, where he surrendered to Governor Eden and received his pardon. Before sailing northward on his remaining sloop, Acrecoke Inlet, Blackbeard marooned about 25 men on a small sandy island about a league from the mainland. Blackbeard continued on to Bathtown, where in June 1718, he and his much reduced crew received a pardon from Governor Eden. He settled in Bathtown on the eastern side of Bath Creek 
at Plum Point. Governor Eden gave Teach permission to sail to St. Thomas to seek a commission as a privateer, and Teach renamed his remaining sloop Adventure. By the end of August, he had returned to piracy. He took two French ships leaving the Caribbean, moved one crew across to the other, and sailed the remaining ship back to Acrocoke. In September, he told Eden that he had found the French ship at sea deserted. As head of a crown colony, Spotswood viewed the colony of North Carolina with contempt. He had little faith in the ability of the Carolinians to control the pirates, who he suspected would be back to their old ways. Spotswood had obtained valuable information on Blackbeard's whereabouts, and he had planned to send his force across the border into North Carolina to capture him. Lieutenant Robert Maynard of the HMS Pearl was given command of two commandeered sloops to approach the town from the sea. Maynard took command of the two armed sloops on the 17th of November. Maynard found the pirates anchored on the inner side of Acrocoke Island on the evening of the 21st of November. On the other side of the island, Blackbeard, however, was busy entertaining guests and had not set up a lookout. At daybreak, Maynard's two sloops entered the channel. The small craft was quickly spotted by adventure and fired at as soon as it was within range of the guns. Blackbeard's crew hoisted the sails and the adventure maneuvered to point its starboard guns toward Maynard's sloop. Adventure turned the guns on the two ships and fired. In an instant, Maynard had lost a third of his forces. After the ship became close enough to board, Blackbeard and his crew did so. They became confused at the sight of Maynard's apparently empty ship. Maynard's men burst from the hold shouting and firing. The plan to surprise Blackbeard and his crew had worked. Blackbeard rallied his men and the two groups fought. Maynard and Blackbeard fired their flintlocks at each other, then threw them away. Blackbeard drew his cutlass and managed to break Maynard's sword. As Maynard drew back to fire once again, Blackbeard moved in to attack him but was slashed across the neck by one of Maynard's men. Badly wounded, he was then attacked and killed by several more of Maynard's crew. The remaining pirates quickly surrendered. The remaining pirates quickly surrendered. Blackbeard's head was decapitated with his body being thrown into the inlet. His head was then suspended from the bowsprit of Maynard's sloop. The pirate Blackbeard was now permanently retired on the 22nd of November, 1718.